a couple questions about Tesla then, since you just brought it up. Um, one is valuation again, though. I mean, you can be right. Kathy was right. She's right. But, you know, the stock goes nowhere for two years versus the S&P, which is what's happened with Tesla. I mean, OK, you can pick any point and come up with any math you want. I, I, I hear you. Also, I, I noticed that you said that market share probably is going to hold constant. It's just that the number of the EV sales are going to explode, which will drive their business. Either of those things sort of concern you or are you still as sanguine about this company as you've ever been? Welcome to Money and Investment, where your financial future starts today. Ever wondered why starting to invest when you're young is a game changer? Let's dive in. Investing in the stock market might seem daunting, but it's a powerful tool for building wealth. Why? It's all about time and compound interest. Starting young means more time for your investments to grow. Think of it like planting a tree. The earlier you plant, the longer it grows and the bigger it gets. Worried about risks? The earlier you start, the more time you have to recover and learn from market ups and downs. And if you're starting at 50, no worries. It's about choosing the right strategies suited to your stage in life. I want to start off with some kind of big picture macro questions and then talk more about specific holdings. It seems like right now, over the past few years, we've been in, in this era of groups of stocks. You've got FANG and now the Magnificent Seven, and they seem to kind of come and go quickly. What, what's your take on all that right now? I can look at it from two angles. One would be a worrying angle, which is the market is narrowing to just a few stocks. And uh, even before my time, there was a period called the Nifty 50, and it was in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, and that was a precursor to a very bad time, uh, the 70s recession and bear market and so forth. Uh, so I understand why technicians and others um, uh, look at a market uh, this way. The other way of looking at this is through our lens today. So if you look at what has happened to ARC after two very difficult years, uh, we don't own most of the Magnificent Seven. We own Tesla in size, uh, but the others uh, either not at all or partial positions in our flagship strategy. And we have been able, through the, through the second quarter, uh, we outperformed uh, even the NASDAQ 100, which is dominated by those uh, those stocks. Now, uh, we're backing and filling now, so uh, we'll see what happens as we uh, enter the end of the year. I think interest rates moving up uh, has uh, given everyone pause, and so they're running back to their benchmarks. But I do think our outperformance in, in the first half uh, and it was significant outperformance, suggested that maybe underneath the market is broadening out. And that's a very healthy sign. Fascinating. You don't think so much top down as much as you do bottoms up though, right? Our process in terms of uh, our investment process, stock selection starts from the top down. Hmm. Uh, and what we're doing is trying to size how big these new technologies are going to become. Uh, what kind of opportunities are they? Uh, and to do that, we use something called Wright's Law, which is a relative of Moore's Law. Uh, Moore's Law is a function of time, every 18 months to two years, uh, same power for half the cost in the semiconductor world. Uh, whereas Wright's Law is a function of units and it says, for every cumulative doubling in the number of units produced by this new technology, costs will uh, decline at a consistent percentage rate. So that's the learning curve. And we can learn from uh, the cost declines and by observing price elasticity of demand, how quickly this technology is going to scale across sectors and turn into a mass market opportunity. So we certainly have done that with electric vehicles and drive train battery technology and so forth. We were able to get much closer to the right answer there because we had calculated that for every cumulative doubling in the number of electric vehicles produced, so one to two, two to four, four to eight, uh, for every cumulative doubling, 
uh, costs declined 28%. And the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle now is lower than that of a gas powered vehicle. And soon the sticker prices will be lower. Uh, so that's an example of costs coming down, units exploding. Last year, uh, electric vehicle units globally were up 60, on the order of 65%, while gas powered sales were down almost 7%. So massive shift, weak auto market, uh, but definitely playing, playing into the favor of EVs. Yeah, which leads you to your biggest holding Tesla, which maybe we'll talk about a little bit more. A couple questions about Tesla then, since you just brought it up. Um, one is valuation again, though. I mean, you can be right. Kathy was right. She's right. But, you know, the stock goes nowhere for two years versus the S&P, which is what's happened with Tesla. I mean, OK, I'm, you can pick any point and come up with any math you want. I, I, I hear you. Also, I, I noticed that you said that market share probably is going to hold constant. It's just that the number of the EV sales are going to explode, which will drive their business. Either of those things sort of concern you or are you still as sanguine about this company as you've ever been? If anything, their competitive advantages are growing. You've noticed that GM and Ford have signed on to uh, uh, Tesla's charging station. They need that infrastructure. And that has increased our confidence, the fact that GM and Ford and others are signing on to this uh, charging platform tells us that these companies understand that the world is shifting from the internal combustion engine, which still is roughly 90% of auto sales out there, to electric vehicles. Well, Tesla does not have to transition. It is there. Uh, it, it has that DNA already. And then even more important from a valuation point of view, uh, we believe Tesla is the closest auto company and closest tech company to uh, a fully commercialized national autonomous taxi platform. I know it sounds crazy, but if you are a Tesla driver and you have gotten the latest uh, FSD, so full self-driving update in the beta, uh, you will see a, a marked difference because of the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence that Tesla is using today in order to move towards full uh, self-driving. Right, with, with self-driving, question there, Kathy. Um, we all know that the number of deaths caused by human error is, you know, 100, 1,000 X versus driverless. And yet the driverless death is going to get all the headlines and freak people out. So when will Americans or globally people get over that and be able to sort of just be dispassionate about the numbers rather than robot killed person kind of yes. thing. Yes, uh, th there is a lot of emotion, you know, th there's a lot of behavioral science in terms of what right. goes in, in the marketplace. Uh, and we went through this with Tesla. So uh, there are 45,000 uh, deaths uh, caused by auto accidents in the US and somewhere between one and 1.25 million globally. 80 to 90% of those are caused by human error. Uh, so with Tesla, it was very interesting. Out of the 45,000 accidents that kill people, um, only Teslas seem to be featured as national news. Uh, and, and there were very few of those, but every single one of them was publicized. And uh, it, it, but truth wins out. And that's our philosophy. Do the research. If you're right, uh, then maybe the National Highway Transportation Safety Association will make the point that 80 to 90% of human deaths in autos are caused by human error. Uh, and they have done that. In fact, uh, when they analyzed Tesla's first fatality, it was in Florida and it was a blindside by a truck. Uh, and they, it took them six months, I think, to analyze it. But they basically came back and said, 
Oh, it seems as though, uh, given the safety features in a Tesla, Tesla's cars are are 40% safer than uh, most other cars out there. And that was it became a selling point for Tesla, for people who actually read these safety reports. So truth wins out. Ready to start your investment journey? Explore our channel for more insights on making smart, informed investment choices. Remember, it's never too late or too early to start investing in your future. Join us at Money and Investment for more tips and tricks on building your wealth. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out.